Hello team and welcome to another ATP Geopolitics video with myself, Jonathan Emmis Pierce, a Ukraine war news update for the 15th and I guess 14th of October 2023. I pre-recorded some for yesterday uh, so it so it wasn't as up to date yesterday as it could have been so let's i'm going, just going to cobble some stuff together today i have been away for the weekend it's been a fabulous weekend what a weekend of rugby the quarterfinals have been electric england scraped through today i've got a match over there france south africa on that screen which is just a scintillating um match and it's it's been brilliant but most of you don't care about that okay uh I've had a heavy weekend. It's up till three this morning, uh, drinking far too much wine and too many games of Spyfall. You can't have too many games of Spyfall. What a wonderful game. Anyway, seeing old uni friends and whatnot and yeah, good times, good times. So if I get my words and thoughts in the right muddle, I am going to play the uh, too much enjoyment card. Uh, apologies. Right, let's look at two days worth of stats because I didn't give you these stats yesterday um, because, as I said, it's pre-record. So let, let's look at both days and see if we've got a, a picture that's built up. So 970 troop losses and then today's one was 880. Those are both really high figures. We were over 1,000 three days ago, but these are st significant high figures for personnel losses. And um, Okay, for, for two days ago, we had, or yesterday, we had nine tanks, 24 armored personnel vehicles, and 26 artillery systems. And today's one this morning, eight tanks, 25 armored personnel vehicles, and 33 artillery systems. And you can just see over two days the, the phenomenal losses the Russians are supposedly taking. One anti-aircraft war warfare system yesterday. Uh, today, two multiple launch rocket systems, but no anti-aircraft warfare system. Um, and yesterday, there was one aircraft uh, that was lost. So that's going to be the, the airframe I reported yesterday. Su-25, was it? Um, I might have to look back at that. Um, one drone, 22 vehicles and fuel tanks and four pieces of special equipment. Today, we had four drones, 24 vehicles and fuel tanks and five pieces of special equipment. So uh, what I think what we can take away from that is a lot of losses that will be degrading the Russian ability to, um, I don't know, significantly defend or produce really big uh, offensive actions. I mean, they have been throwing armor uh, into say Avdivka for example and haven't really got far I think minor advances just I would argue just not worth the cost uh, to their forces um, and, and just leaves you wondering what would they be able to do going forward well let's look at Andrew Perpetua's lost stats he's a mapper that I refer to an awful lot and he tots up all the figures on a daily basis this was yesterday's one uh, as you can see it is really in favor of the Ukrainians in terms of numbers. Let's try and get a sense of what type of vehicle. Uh, vehicle. So look at the Ukrainians. and I mean, we've probably got a four to one loss ratio, maybe more. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's Russian to Ukraine. So there, there are there's a multiple launch rocket system, RM-70 Vampire. Uh, we have some kind of SPG, a couple of tanks. Uh, pretty old, much old tanks, a Marder uh, and some trucks and whatnot. But when we look at the the Russian losses, you've got a Tor and a Strela surface to air missile system, so the air defense systems, and that is significant. Some surveillance and comm stuff, a bunch of artillery, and a really large number of tanks, a whole range of tanks there, apart from T90, although one of those unknown ones might be T90. Uh, and a lot of IFEs, a lot of trucks uh, and a couple of APCs as well. So they are losing, yes, logistically an awful lot. So if we look back over the last two days, you've got 24 vehicles and fuel tanks and 22. So that's 46. Well, we're seeing those figures at least you know, reflected in some way in these, in these lost stats here. But also the IFVs and tanks uh, and artillery pieces are you know, heavy numbers, and and that's what we're seeing on the general staff figures as well. So that's kind of what you would expect. And remember, the, this is only going to be uh, a snapshot, a, a sort of well, no, a, a, a fraction of what has actually been destroyed. It's not that Andrew Perpetua, as a single human being, is going to see all of the destroyed footage or footage of all the destroyed vehicles, and he's 
there, there might not be the footage either. So they're either not recorded or not uploaded. So those three options means that this is only a reflection, a poor reflection in a sense, um, but it gives you the trend and the trend looks to be that the Russians are taking really heavy losses. Anyway, that was yesterday's one. And then this, which is still actually yesterday, it was last night, my time, uh, two within, you know, it was 24 hours, I guess, apart, but the, the way... I'm presenting them to you. There, There isn't one from my day today that Andrew Popoche has done, as far as I can work out. Anyway, nonetheless, we have probably a three to one ratio here Russian losses to Ukrainian. Ukrainian losses are yeah, a bit of a, a spectrum of stuff, but nothing that's crazy high value. The Russians have again lost um, a pretty yeah, a, a pretty ref, um, reflective range. As again, I can't find my words. God, too much wine. You, you've got a range of stuff from tanks, IFEs, and artillery. What you know exactly what you'd expect. Uh, engineering vehicle and excavator it just goes to show that they are still aiming at, at things that will help the Russians build their trenches. Um, but yeah, the, again, the losses are worse for the Russians there. Right, we let's look at a few bits and pieces. So a few minutes ago, says Tim White, although this was uh, actually yesterday morning. He said, a few minutes ago, I wrote about Russia's troops in Abdivka being pressed into battle without cover. There's lots of stuff coming out about Abdivka. I'm going to do maybe a separate little uh, Abdivka analysis video next. Uh, which will be looking at a few sources I have about what's taken place in Abdivka. So now news from Astra Media uh, over, that over 40 were locked up, so 40 Russian troops were locked up in secret prison basements in occupied Luhansk for refusing to fight without sufficient weapons or ammunition. Well, here we've got Dmitry from, from War Translated uh, giving you another video of people complaining. Um, relatives of the mobilized men from Tatarstan are puzzled as to why the battalion was placed on the zero line in the Svatova direction and not in the defense as promised and is taking colossal casualties as a result. Regiment number 1234. Uh, so these are uh, yeah, relatives complaining that their own uh, the units of their own um, of their own troops are taking quote colossal casualties, and it goes back. We go back to these stats: eight hundred and eighty lost today, nine hundred and seventy yesterday. Does that uh, does this evidence of this video support those claims? Well, yes, there there are. They're not disconfirming, should we say that? Um, right, then we've got an awful lot of footage coming out of what's what's been taking place on the front line. So this is Chris O'Wicky saying, after a drunken Russian soul officer sorry, ordered his lightly armed unit into a disastrous assault in which 300 men were lost, the survivors mutinied and refused to carry out further orders. They were reportedly imprisoned in a notorious torture facility. Astra reports, so this is going back to the Tim White's Astra um, uh, claim here. So Astra reports that the fate of the mobilized men from the 12th Guards Tank Regiment, based in the Moscow region, who was sent into an assault that likely took place around Sinkivka near Kupiansk in a letter sent to military prosecutors, relatives say. So this is right in that northern uh, um, part of the front line up by Kupiansk, as you can see there, Liman Pashi, Sinkivka, just to give you an idea. According, quote, according to our soldiers, their commander in the person of Lieutenant Colonel Mik, uh, Mikovson, who was in a drunken state, sent them to carry out the combat mission, carrying only automatic rifles without support. Entering the position, they came under fire from enemy artillery. This led to the loss of about 300 people of the Russian army. The relatives say that 42 survivors left the position and refused to carry out further combat missions without artillery support or adequate supplies of ammunition. As a consequence, the next day they were reported that they were being taken to Zaitseve to clarify all the circumstances, where it turned later turned out that they were being held in a basement in inhumane conditions, tortured and threatened with prison time. Their cell phones were taken away and the guys didn't get in touch anymore. We demand this situation be addressed. Basement in question is almost certainly that of the former House of Culture in the northeastern Ukrainian village of Zaitseve, which the Russian army and FSB have turned into a concentration rehabilitation center for recalcitrant 
Trump to soldiers. Uh, the letter was written on 12th of October. Astro reports that according to relatives, the men were released on the 14th of October. It's not known what their current status is. Again, this is painting a picture of significant losses as well as bad decision making on uh, on yeah as a result of Russian in this case I would say incompetence um, and a lack of lack of equipment too. So yeah, it's it's been I think probably a tough week for the Russians um, on the offensive front rather than on the defensive front. A uh, couple of bits and pieces to add: Russia on fire, northeast of Moscow, buildings on fire near Lobolva, Rokossovskogo metro station. Yeah. Emergency services initially say it's abandoned. It's an abandoned place, so possibly an insurance job, uh, which is if, if that is the case, often connected uh, to the war in terms of money being tight uh, not getting much income from commercial properties and uh, I'm not saying that's what happened here but you, you will see you ha have been seeing a lot more of these sort of incidents because the economy is tanking um, okay no reports there's a powerful explosion happening in Kherson uh, this isn't distant strikes this is probably it, well, it might be aviation um, but they also receive a lot of attention from artillery so according to Roman Rochka head of the Kherson city administration there were our water and electricity out outages in some areas of the city so that was uh this morning right going on to distance strikes and again apologies for sort of cobbled together like it's uh, my the timing of how i've done my research over the last couple of days has been obviously completely screwed so um right i'm going to go back to the claim about the pavel de, uh, de javin warship so yesterday these videos showing the russian warship pavel de javin project 22160 class near sevastopol were making rounds on social media so i reported them two days in a row actually um and initially it wasn't entirely clear what caused the black smoke at the stern of the russian warship according to multiple accounts including russian sources the cause was an unmanned underwater vehicle to underwater vehicle uuv exploding near the ship and damaging the steering section the russian warship was seaworthy enough to withdraw back to russia a tugboat nearby suffered heavier damage it is obvious that this incident further erodes the already weak russian control in the western black sea area and forces more russian warships to seek refuge in russian harbors such as Norosisk. The Russian blockade of Odessa is now basically broken, another absolute turn of events com um, compared to the beginning of 2022. So it's interesting that the claim they would talk about them being sea babies, uh, these unmanned sea vehicles, the surface drones, but they might have been underwater drones, which are, uh, I, th I believe, experimental at the moment. So that is, uh, that is, would be incredibly important if that is the case, because it's showing a, an improvement in the capability of the, of the Ukrainians in terms of their maritime drones, and it shows how uh, vulnerable the Black Sea Fleet is. Okay, there's been a lot of attention over Crimea, I believe, a lot over the last 24 hours or so. Uh, Jankoy saw air defences active. Jankoy is in the north of Crimea. It's a logistics hub and has a, an airbase and other depots and whatnot. So it's quite an important place to for the Ukrainians to strike. Russia claimed that two drones were shot down over the Black Sea. Um, th uh, that was yesterday. Uh, Alexei Kopaygorodsky, the mayor of the Russian Black Sea resort of Sochi, claimed that on the 14th local air defense has shot down two drones over the sea so that's what we just heard he said that there were no casualties or damages in the city the russian defense ministry confirmed a drone attack saying that two targets were downed near the black sea coast of russia's krasnodar Krai, where sochi is located these claims could not be independently verified programmed in russian telegram channel mash cited residents saying they heard five or six explosions followed by power outages in some houses so it's unlikely that uh, the Russians shot down everything. The mayor, however, didn't mention anything about electricity cutoffs resulting from the attack. Indeed, there is some imagery coming out of explosions near Sochi. Um, that is a lively start to the southwest Russia near Sochi. This was a view from the port of Adler in southern Krasnodar Krai. Uh, 
update on the story of the drones allegedly being destroyed off the coast. There are reports of explosions in Sochi itself, which is a pearl of the Black Sea, Russia's pearl of the Black Sea. Some locals say five, they heard five to six pops uh, and the airport was closed, but it's now open. That was what he reported um, slightly later in the morning. Right, Russian region... Uh, was plunged into darkness after after suspected Ukrainian drone strikes. And there's video imagery of these drone strikes. Multiple Ukrainian media outlets released a video allegedly showing drones targeting an electrical substation in Belgorod or Blast. So there are similarities to this kind of approach as to the Russian attack on U attacks on Ukrainian energy infrastructure that we saw last winter and autumn and that we're expecting this winter and autumn. Some are therefore, I think, um, I guess, spinning this. I don't know if that's right or whether this is, genu this is a genuine aspect to the strikes. But the SBU attacked the Krasnaya Yaruga electrical substation in the Belgorod, Belgorod region that supplied Russian military facilities. So I, I think the uh, the idea here is it's this is attacking energy infrastructure, but they are saying uh, in this case it's because it directly supplies Russian military facilities nearby. Now, I can't talk to the accuracy of that, but uh, they're obviously you know they don't want to be seen to be taking out critical civilian infrastructure in the same way that Russia has done because obviously they are criticizing for Russia Russia for doing that uh, so this is being seen more in a context of still being a legitimate target for military purposes but you know i'll leave you to make up your mind about that um and then unconfirmed reports that ukraine hit the kalino military airfield in kursk uh last night and that is yeah that is last night this is today's post there um uh, russia says it shot down 27 drones 18 above the kursk region uh, Tim White says, hoping for a leak or a satellite proof in the next 24 hours or so. That could, it could mean that there are some significant losses for the Russians inside their own territory or that they indeed shot down uh, most of the drones or all of the drones. I don't know. Uh, I, quite often we eventually hear that damage was done in these cases. So it'd be interesting to see what information comes out in the wash right uh, this i'm not, not going to show you this video but it i'll talk you through it it's, it's interesting remember all of the links for this part of the segment for the hits and losses and strikes are in the description to the vi to this video below as they are every day and you can click on them to find out you, you know to look at these videos in, in uh, as a whole or in their entirety so another great example says Tendo here with spectacular end uh, of the russian ammunition storage why cluster ammunition has such an important value in warfare it's hard to argue against its effectiveness especially in theaters of war such as ukraine so here you've got some ammo storage o over here and the the cluster munition fires and and sort of sparkles all along here and it's actually one of the sub munitions that blows up the the whole ammunition dump but the center of the cluster uh, strike was somewhere to the left of this image the point the point of me talking about this is that cluster munitions can be uh, effective because they have a greater spread uh, and rather than requiring a single piece of ordnance to hit the target directly or at least very close to it you can fire a cluster munition and be somewhat less accurate and still get the desired outcome and this is one of those examples where they they destroy the ammunition depot uh, with the edge really of of the of the spray of the cluster munition so that's uh, that was interesting to watch i thought uh, right going to other bits and pieces russian authorities confirmed the restoration of the kerch bridge and that they were completed time for another attack asks no reports uh, this is a uh why well, it's, it's i guess it's opening up for the the bridge to be struck again they have done things like it appears that the russians have sunk some ferries along here and have created some kind of artificial defense for the bridge against maritime drones, probably both underwater and on top of the water, surface drones. But um, 
they the ukrainians we know have access to missiles that should be able to hit this uh their own possibly their own kind of neptune s200 or uh Hriv. there there are a number of options and of course cruise missiles so it could be that the Kerch Bridge is targeted again. Now it has been fixed. Right. Uh, Marina, I reported this yesterday. Marina of Yannikova, former news editor for Russian State TV, who collapsed yesterday amid reports she may have been poisoned, has dismissed the rumours. She posted this to her own Telegram channel. No toxic, toxic substances were found. She's now much better. So there were claims initially that, uh, that she had been poisoned. Uh, and I repeated those claims. It appears not to be true. I thought those claims originally came for her. So I don't know that she's dispelling the rumours or just correcting her initial worries. But anyway, either way, it doesn't appear to have been a poisoning. Uh, survey, uh, says the Kiev Independent, shows that the majority of Ukrainians have turned away from Russian media, such as music. Between 68 and 81% of Ukrainians have stopped consuming Russian media products, including both the official and anti-government pol government political content media detector reported on October the 15th. So it's today citing its survey. According to the latest phase of the study from late 2022 to early 2023, from 68% to 81% of respondents said they completely abandoned Russian made media products, including music and both official and uh, opposition socio-political content. Um, says Halina uh, Petrenko, the NGO's director. Now, this is another way that Russia is being negatively affected by the fact that they have invaded another country and gone to war. So I, I, this is a, an aspect of the economic argument, but also you could argue that it's there's a cultural element to this as well. So the cultural influence of Russia on Ukraine has dwindled considerably. Uh, that you know, we've seen that in terms of language, with many more Ukrainians now embracing the Ukrainian language rather than the Russian language. Well, they're also much more likely to embrace Ukrainian music and media content by the looks of it than Russian uh, music and media content. So this will affect the income that those that those entities can earn, I guess, in terms of ad revenue or whatever whatever it is, Spotify or I, I don't know. So it'll affect. You know, Russian entities in in terms of their income, but also affect the the cultural influence of Russia. So, I thought that's worth noting. Right, uh, activists have said that five thousand human rights abuses have been recorded in Crimea during the Russian occupation. Over five thousand human rights violations have been recorded in Crimea since the start of the Russian occupation in twenty fourteen, mainly against the Crimean Tatar community. Ukraine Forum reported on October the fifteenth. So this is actually going back nine years, uh, citing human rights activist Alim Aliyev. Aliyev. Uh, and again, you know, these are people you want to be supporting, really. Uh, and then Putin was sort of interviewed or, or there's a bit of a, a vox pop here from him um, that came out yesterday, I think. Or was it? No, it might be in this morning. From Kiev by lunchtime to active defense with improvement of positions in certain areas. So this is the idea that Putin a year and a half ago was like, yeah, we're going to we're going to take Kiev in three days, etc., 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 and then a year and a half later, it's like, no, we've moved to active defence with improvement of the positions in certain areas. It's like, yeah, things aren't going that well, are they, mate? Uh, Putin gives commentary on a frontline situation where the second army in the world is currently waging a major armoured assault operation against a waste heap in Avdivka. Uh, how the mighty have fallen, arguably. So, uh, yes, uh, we we will. Just have a look at, at what he says here, and I'll read you through his uh, reactions, and you can make of that what you will. So the interviewer says, important question about the SMO, the war, what's happening on the front line? We now hear official statements from Kiev that the counteroffensive bogged down is behind the schedule. Uh, recently, you said our forces advance in 12 directions. We're reading the news on Avdivka. Should we expect the capture of Avdivka? So this is actually quite... Uh, a big question. I mean, obviously, it shows you that that they're willing to to take in the complete. Uh, well, all the Russian talking points is like, yeah, the we're hearing that the counteroffensive is is stalled, and um, the Russians are, are pushing on, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but yeah, 
direct question about Avdivka. And Putin says, regarding the counteroffensive that is allegedly bogged down, it has completely failed. We know that in some areas of the hostilities, still, the opposing side is preparing new active offensive operations. We see it, we know it, and we act accordingly. And what is happening along the whole front line is called active defence. Uh, this is what actually what I've been talking about, which is... Th- off, you know, offense is the best form of defense, and as soon as they lose ground, they they do counterattacks to try and retake it. Um, Putin says, and our army is improving its positions across most of this space, uh, which is rather big. This involves Kupiansk direction, Zaporizhia direction, and Avdivka direction. Uh, this is to say, generally, uh, place names can vary, and but yes, it's called active defense and the improvement of the positions in certain areas. Uh, we're not hiding it and I'd like to thank the armed forces Uh, but of course he doesn't actually answer the question about Avdivka as I say I'll do a little update on Avdivka next I think anyway take care thank you so much I'm not going to do the geopolitics uh, and military aid segments that I'd normally do the the two videos for news I'm not going to do them because I'm going to compile it all in tomorrow's one and add what I find uh, from now until then to, to what I already have but hopefully this gives you a bit of a snapshot of some of the activity that all the the effects of the activity uh, over the past few days and check out for as I said the Abdivka one and I'll, I'll probably do a frontline update uh, just a separate one to that so Keep your eyes peeled. Take care. Speak soon.